I think we can start now. Wow, it is, uh, yeah, and Ruhi, is uh, Deepika there? Uh, no, sir. Just call her up because she has to begin, no? Okay, sir. I will only do the welcome. You will do that. Okay, fine. So I think let okay. us start. It's already 5.05. Right. Okay, sir. And people will keep joining. Okay, sir. Good evening all. I welcome you all for our panel discussion on Bridge Failures Day 1. Today we have Engineer Mohan Jatkar, Engineer Umesh Rajasirke, Engineer Aditya Sharma and Engineer Rajiv Ahuja with us. Now I would like to introduce our moderator for the event, Engineer Vinay Gupta. Engineer Vinay Gupta, he is a civil engineer from Bits Pilani 1983 batch and Managing Director of Tandon Consultants Private Limited. He is having specialization in bridges, flyovers, underground and elevated metro structures, precast building, 275 meter tall chimneys, etc. He is an active member of various court committees of BIS and IRC. Mm -hmm. His contribution include preparation of IRC SP65, segmental bridges, IRC SP71, precast pretension girder bridges, etc. He is a recipient of several awards from IEI, IBC and UKIERI. He has been lecturing as a guest faculty in IAHE, CRRI, CIDC, ISDA, DPC, etc. Engineer Gupta is all India president of IIDE. With this introduction, I hand over the session to our moderator. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rohi. Uh, good evening and welcome to all to this uh, uh, very interesting session on failures. I don't. I know that nobody wants failures, but they just still do take place, and uh, like we have not been able to help very much. Uh, but the fact is that a pretty large number of bridges are being constructed in this large country of India, which is a part of I would say something like forty kilometers of road a day that our honourable transport minister has taken the oath to continue then we are going ahead with it. So larger the construction, larger the uh, possibilities of failure. And because of this fear, we cannot stop the construction. Rather, we should take all precautions as to avoiding the failures. And this uh, panel discussion with all these eminent, uh, eminent panelists that they see, including uh, EC members also, uh, like Mr. Atul Bhobe and few others, and of course, we have uh, uh, engineer S.K. Puri, I can see on the screen. We'll be discussing the causes of these failures and what remedies could be feasible uh, with the experience of all these stalwarts who have in this field. Uh, today, for example, as the world is moving forward, a large number of new technologies are being used. New materials are being incorporated in the structures. And there are failures of various kinds. For example, there is a failure on account. There are failures on account of weathering, and there have been um, uh, several cases in the existing bridges during service. But I saw one classic failure of a well foundation in UP, wherein the entire well, after ten years of serv service of the bridge, the well sank, pier sank, and it went down up to the pier coming pier cap coming onto the ground. Certain stories, they remain unsolved unless you really excavate and see what happened and even then you may not be able to know. So certain failures are like this. There must have been something somewhere in the design or construction. Um, we have seen several failures of peer caps and not only in India, but we saw something outside India, in Sri Lanka, wherein the peer caps has cracked on account of anchorage lens, which we were asked to investigate. Failure of bearings have been pretty common during construction, post-construction. In many examples, you must be also knowing several in your experience. Uh, there have been several cases of failures of diaphragm uh, segment. Because diaphragm segment or the diaphragm itself of the box girder has many forces to take into account and it has a lot of complexities of its own. And I have seen several failures of the diaphragms, cracks and all that in let's say Bihar, in uh, UP, in uh, Karnataka and so on. Uh, even the simple bridges like girder bridges, they have also been failing. 
we say they are simple regular they are almost like commodity we just construct day in and day out a girder slab bridge but number of girder bridges have been falling uh, especially during the construction more so uh, many of the failures that i have seen in the last uh, about 4 5 years many that uh, so many bridges have uh, sort of failed or even collapsed during the construction due to temporary stability issues and they also need to be addressed equally importantly like the permanent condition there have been cases where toppling has caused the failures there were cases case in uh, mumbai there was a case in uh, somewhere in north which was a army bridge and the one in uh, the army bridge i am talking about it failed after one year of service but because of toppling the trucks were parked and maybe it was just a touch and go situation and one fine day it fell down when there were two trucks parked over it during seismic activity yes some failures have taken place you know so maharashtra latur earthquake in 1993 killari earthquake as we call it there were several uh, failures failures when i say they may not collapse but there may be cracks there may be excessive deformations anything is a failure for that reason uh, there have been few cases of failures of even special design bridges like extra dose bridges cable state bridges and so on even in within india outside india as well so there can be failures practically in any sphere of our bridge engineering and we need to arrest it we need to reduce it we need to address it first so for that we'll have our uh, eminent experts uh, views on of their experience in the whatever 3 4 5 decades that they have spent of their career so what i will do i'll uh, begin with our first panelist mr uh, umesh rajesh shirke he is a managing director of spectrum i will rather introduce all the four panelists one by one uh, as the as we come to the the presentations the format will be that i will request uh, all the panelists to first say a few words or may show some slides if they have in about 10 minutes or so after that and in the meantime i will request uh, um, the participants to please post their questions in question answer box not in chat question answer box which will be taken up immediately after the presentations and uh, every panelist would be of course free to uh, give his his uh, views yes and uh, i'll also be requesting uh, the other people who are in the panel here apart from the formal panelists like engineer sk puri uh, mr uh, engineer atul bhobe and maybe couple of more so before uh, we begin with the presentation from mr umesh rajesh shirke i will introduce him in about 2 uh, minutes uh, mr umesh rajesh shirke he is a managing director as i said of spectrum techno consultants private limited and of course they are involved in excellent structures over the country and outside he has over 30 years of experience in the planning and design of bridges flyovers large span steel structures pre stressed and reinforced concrete structures etc he graduated from vjti mumbai in 1987 in fact vjti is iib student chapter also now and he did his masters from it madras in 1991 he was involved in design of many prestigious structures like cable state bridges number of precast segmental bridges metro rail viaducts long span steel truss and arch bridges and dct and nuclear containment structures he is a member of various bis and irc committees and published number of papers in national and international conferences and journals so with this experience of over 30 years i know uh, let us hear mr umesh rajesh shirke first please yeah thank you thank you vinay for the introduction and i am here for this particular webinar so i will uh, share my screen uh, so are you able to see it yes absolutely yeah. yes okay so what i am going to do is just uh, okay let me straight away go to the presentation i uh, see in 1920 uh, mr rk garg uh, has published some statistics about this uh, bridge failure in india from 1977 to 19 uh, 
uh, in structures and infrastructure engineering magazine. So more than uh, 2,000 bridges, failure cases he has uh, reported, and he has analyzed those. Uh, why it is not? Yeah, uh, analyzed those failures, and what he found that. Uh, most of the bridges, that is almost 70% of this failures has happened in the beginning of uh, their service life. That is within the first five years. And uh, these are the numbers of uh, our age of the at failure uh, and respective percentages. Okay. So uh, you can see that most of the failures have occurred uh, within the first five years. And... Uh, the, if, the, if you see the material-wise distribution of this failure during the new construction, that is the first five years, most of the bridges were of RCC and PSC, that is 107. Then the steel bridges, about 13. Then Bailey and composite and some other uh, unknown type. So you can see that RCC and PSC is uh, occupying the, uh, most of the numbers. And uh, then uh, the component-wise uh, number of bridges failed in the surveys. Our sample size was 622. The superstructure failure is about 72%. The substructure is about 10, foundation 6%, abutment and uh, re wall, etc. 6, expansion joints, bearings is 1%, and depleted demolished is uh, about a 5%. Uh, and the reasons for the failure during the construction of the bridges. Most that is a 42 percent or 42 numbers rather, uh, number of the bridges is due to the failure of the scaffolding, the construction methodology or technique, then disaster like that is a, uh, the splash flood, flood, and so on. Then the design fault is about 10 numbers, mechanical failures, eight numbers, the human error during the construction is about nine, nine numbers, and unknown uh, reason is a uh, 1%. So that gives you the overall overview of this uh, uh, failures which happened in last almost uh, 40, 45 years in our country. So it is excellent work uh, by Mr. Arkevel. Uh, uh, gives an overview of these failures. Now, uh, if you try to classify further the why these failures, it could be by design, due to design, Maybe during construction errors and during operation or a service uh, stage. In design, it could be at the conceptual stage itself. The concept, the design itself is the faulty. Uh, the detailed design, including the detailing of various uh, uh, details. In construction, the quality control, that is the, basically the, uh, the material and uh, um, the production of uh, various elements, construction methods, sequence, uh, the design of the equipment like a scaffolding or launching girders and so on. And during operation, that is uh, the lack of a maintenance, um, the uh, this, uh, influence of the environmental uh, elements like chlorides, carbonation, and uh, it's kept on happening without uh, paying much attention or repairs uh, to that. And there could be some reasons, which is, uh, we can call it as a beyond uh, design basis event, like uh, the earthquake, which is not considered in the design or a wind, or <clears throat> maybe some accident, uh, accident in the sense, uh, collision of some heavy vehicle, barge, uh, which was not considered during the time of the design. So this could be the various reasons for the failures. So in this, my 10, 15 minutes presentation, I will be mainly concentrating on the design. That is the conceptual and detailed design. Maybe Chatkar Saab or uh, can uh, talk about the construction methods, etc. Uh, so possible sources of the errors, mistakes in the various stages of design, concept design. It could be during the concept, modeling or planning, modeling, analysis, uh, detailed design, detailing, preparation of the drawings. That is basically the communication with the uh, site. And during construction, some ad hoc changes in the design without uh, thinking uh, what could be its effect on the other part of the structure. 
and the documentation many times our project gets delayed and the new team comes uh, uh, for the balance design and because of that bad archiving or not having a sufficient past data ha huh, there could be a some uh, lag uh, in the uh, uh, balance design so these are could be the various sources of the errors or mistakes at various stages of the design actually uh, our uh, design uh, should be very simple uh, have a simplicity in the thought process at every stage uh, we should not complicate the design that leads to the not only is in design but the construction and maintenance also so let's go just uh, i will uh, run through the various small small example the concept design and the planning it should be a simple constructible functional uh, clear Rajesh, with respect to the uh, sir rajesh sir please yeah. wait for 6 minutes space okay uh, flow of the forces appreciate uh, locations then the modeling and analysis uh, then uh, 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 these are the typical examples of a failure of a previous the curve because this particular loading was not considered in the design detailing design uh, the for example spine and wing how uh, we construct the first the spine and then the wings but while designing we consider uh, the entire pistis with the uh, spine in the design of the uh, with the uh, uh, wing the design of the spine so the uh, compression stresses are quite uh, large in this case uh, then the the, um, the this uh, geometry uh, uh, of the bridge see, for example there is the king and then there is a uh, the force resulting towards which is uh, crushing this particular point so we need to have a provide some kind of a beam at this particular point then the oh, construction wow. sequence how uh, many times uh, we miss this construction sequence for example when you put a one span uh, there could be a uh, one splash dislodge condition and there could be a cracks in the uh, pier that it has to happen very regularly about 20 25 years now because of this uh, awareness this kind of failure have reduced in uh, in recent time then at in a liquid design of sphere this this kind of a cracks you can see especially in uh, around mumbai uplift of the bearings how uh, many times uh, we don't consider uh, the uplift and so in the design of the bearing see you can see the uh, the failure of the bearing because of not consider this uplift in a bearing design again the communication gap uh, inadequate uh, reinforcement which can anchor in the uh, uh, pier cap uh, cable layout if it is not uh, uniformly placed how uh, especially the uh, uh, layout in the horizontal direction the bearing uh, this beam gets bent in the uh, plan then again the curvature this uh, cables can pop out without uh, much uh, detailing See, these are the typical case of the popping out of this uh, cables or pull out of this cables and now uh, we have given a, a detailed rules in our new or uh, irc over one to then the detailing this is the typical case of a uh, karam nasa bridge again the same what vinay was telling the inadequate detailing of this reinforcement for the bearing grouping of the cables assumptions in the design this is a curved cable but actually at the side there could be a kink and which again give a um, uh, uh, crushing of the concrete at this particular uh, uh, blister then the again the force transfer uh, from uh, bearing from this bearing to this and there could be a cracks in this particular direction and so many uh, cases in the for the in the detailing these are some then the presentation of the drawing the drawing lack of the sufficient details adequate number of the views cross sections welding details uh, safe bearing pressures of the not mentioning the safe bearing pressure pile capacity or termination level on the drawing missing notes about design assumptions uh, construction sequence missing or wrong stressing sequence of the pre-stressing cables timing for the uh, cable grouting sequence of the casting of the deck slabs etc and during construction again ad hoc changes take place uh, during construction that again leads to the failure and the documentation which i have already covered uh, i talked uh, in the beginning so the basic approach uh, the main thing uh, for this awarding uh, awardance of this failure is uh, swiss cheese model where you have to at every stage uh, 
see this whole represent the vulnerability of the failure and this is the type when all this uh, uh, possibilities aligns together then the uh, failures takes place so we have to see how that uh, those kind of a things do not occur uh, um, uh, at all and these are the various ways how we can reduce this failures and uh, the eurocode gives a very uh, a uh, nice approach of what could be the consequences of the failure low medium high uh, and what kind of a supervision uh, you need and what is the minimum uh, recommended requirements for checking the calculations drawings and specification for example cc1 is a self checking uh, cc2 where the consequences are medium checking by different person uh, than who's originally responsible in accordance with the uh, procedure of the organization if it is the consequences are very high like uh, bridges the third party checking checking performed uh, by the organization different from that which has prepared the design so these are the ways you can avoid this failures so this is uh, what i wanted to say so thank you ah uh, thank you so much mr uh, rajesh erke you almost stuck to your time i thought you going to go very lengthy sorry i need to, <laughs> no, I no. to just i wanted to brush Uh, upon don't the, mind upon because we yeah. want the uh, attendants, the participants, to uh, you know interact more. So yeah, yeah, of course. Yes. Only to get an idea, but of yeah. course, uh, I must say that Mr. Rajesh Shirke very nicely covered a compendium of what kind of failures take place on what accounts. So by knowing the percentage of failures on different kinds of bridges in the regions, you know where to concentrate more to reduce the number of failures. And of course, you gave a very interesting uh, fact about. the problems in design detailing and maybe finally construction god knows but at least this design and detailing loadings which you mentioned yeah these things have been an integral part of the failure mechanism we only try to say construction 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 but really speaking they are the beginning uh, of uh, possibility of a failure fine so our right. next panelist is uh, engineer aditya sharma Just a few words about him. He's very nice and very enthusiastic worker. I know. Uh, he, Mr. Aditya Sharma, has more than three decades of rich and relevant experience in the field of bridges and structural engineering. He is presently working with SC Singla Construction Private Limited as director technical. He was leading the team of bridge experts in Rambal in India for 15 years, since year 2008 till 2023, and he has more than 16 years of Hands-on experience with right. So this is he's a person who's sort of seen both sides of the world. He has been designing in rights and Rambal as director Rambal, and now he's into construction as director uh, S P Singla. So nobody can be better than him. I must say that uh, kind of both the experiences he has, and Mr. Sharma is having wide range of experience in planning, detailed engineering design, proof checking, and project management of various bridges. Highways and infrastructure projects. He is well versed with national and international codes of bridge design standards and specification. He is a member of technical committees of loads and load combinations, uh, design of concrete bridge bridges, bearings and guidelines of extra doors and cable stay bridges of Indian Road Congress that is B2 IRC B2 B4 B6 and B9 committees. He is functioning as member secretary for technical committee of loads and stresses. Uh, load and load combinations, and as a major contribution in publication of seismic guidelines on bridges in India, that is IRC SP one one four and its modification. Uh, he has published papers in FIB, IRC, IB, etc. Engineer Sharma is involved in detailed design of Mumbai Transfer Harbour Link, a very important project, which is a twenty two kilometer long viaduct in the sea, and its superstructure is being constructed with external force tensioning, which is not so common in the country. He is a member of many professional societies like Indian Roads Congress, International Association of Bridge and Bridge and Structural Engineers, the IABSC, and Indian Concrete Institute. So I think we have the right person with us, right, right technocrat with us, uh, to enlighten all of us. So Mr. Sadhita Sharma, please, and we are thankful to him that despite of a constraint he has, that he has to take a flight in the evening, maybe he had to postpone his flight uh, to attend to this. Uh, panel discussion so thank you so much mr sharma please go on uh thank you uh, vinay ji and uh, iib to giving me this opportunity uh 
yeah uh, see my panel discussion today is uh, primarily a case study uh, of uh, failure of collapse uh, of a segmental box girder bridges spine and wing where i was involved in different capacities for such uh, two uh, two investigations so uh, without naming the projects as such i will i will go through the uh, the the my experiences uh, on 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 these uh, uh, investigations and uh, would like to uh, add on further few things which are now under discussions uh, because of these large texts being constructed all over uh, in, in india because of different reasons in fact uh, we all aware that uh, the large decks uh, in india has becoming a a sort of uh, mandatory requirement sometimes this is primarily because the traffic demand has increased from two lane to four lane to six lane to eight lanes in the highways earlier we used to have a single pier option preferred in uh, urban areas this is always preferred because these covers less number of operation space below the deck but previously when we do these things in urban area our carriages carriageways are normally two lanes maximum uh, uh, two lanes or four lanes not to the level of six lanes or eight lanes on a single pier and deck width has steadily increased from single cell to multi multi cell and strutted boxes and moreover uh, i can see that the authorities are preferring this option because of the single foundation single pier and a large wide decks standing over over these these elements and they 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 are becoming it as as a mandatory requirement in the contract the 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 because of this changes which are coming up uh, because of the uh, requirement uh, of doing work doing the uh, capacity augmentation in the urban area uh, people started looking into the bridge tech erection capacity increase which is which is uh, which is which is part of constructing such decks then there is always a challenges of transport uh, transportability of and negotiation of curve uh, superstructure form such as strutted box spine wing and construction as to start evolving and you can see that some these are very common things uh, in the in the industry construction industry particularly in the bridge industry uh, to to do, do these type of constructions uh, for for all your information in fact uh, uh, where i uh, where uh, our, my previous organization is involved way back in 1970s these type of construction has been done uh, but i think some sort of problems have started developing and i can see that in in the european uh, environment i have not seen these large decks you know uh, they are constructing uh, the the 34 meter wide 25 meter wide decks generally not constructing and in fact it was it is just it's not very popular in the in in that in, in that countries the reason we we are we are not aware of much but yes they are they are not very popular in that countries uh so i would like to go through a study of uh, of a project uh, which is in the vicinity of uh, delhi uh, we have a elevated structure with deck width of uh, 34 meter and uh, it's have a pre cast segmented spine girder of 14 meter uh, 14 meter wide which, which uh, contributes to 41.41 uh, 42% of the deck width pre cast wings of 10 meter each that means out of 34 meter Uh, there is a spine beam of 14 meter and 10 meter 10 meter cantilever on both sides uh, depth of the box girder is 2.575 meter on the center and span length is 40 meter number of spans is 219 and physical progress when this collapse has happened the physical progress of the project is 55% the grade of concrete pier segment is m40 and all other segment is uh, m50 for the pier segment and all other segment is um, m40 i will come back to you about the grade of the concrete in such constructions these are the few uh, you know uh, how the structure has uh, the superstructure typical superstructure uh, you can see there is about 17 uh, segments uh, we have a pier segment uh, in uh, in uh, pier segments on the both the sides and then there is a uh, uh, blister segments and then uh, there is a transition segment and then few regular segments and the total width of the superstructure is 37 meter uh there are about uh, 22 cables uh in the in the whole superstructure of uh, uh 37 meter uh, bearing to bearing distance 
in this there is uh, 20 uh, 16 cables are stressed at the at the diaphragm segments and then the four four cables are stressed uh, at the at the at the uh, blisters uh, in between of the spans these are the blisters where these the, the four cables are are stressed so total six cables four are in the previous and then two more in the next stage stages they there was a uh, uh, sequence for the pre uh, sequence for uh, pre stress and as mr uh, rashirke has touched on the that there is the whole pre stress is applied at a single stage to the spine in fact the stage 1 we are stressing about they are stressing about seven cables stage 2 they are stressing up, uh, they, are, they are they are saying that mobilization of span to on the temporary bearings removal of the spine Stage three is the cable stressed in the, uh, in the in the sequence. The three cables are stressed. Stage four is uh, the launching girder shall be marched to the uh, next stage, and stage five is the stressing of rest of the cables. But it gives you the leverage that you can com combine stage three and five. That means after transferring the load to the temporary bearings, you can stress all the cables. That means the whole pre-stressed to be applied. To a spine segment, which is which is about 22 cables of 27 k 15. These are the few photographs of the spines which are being erected from the LG from the top. These are the few photographs, and then the the the, the spine being erected, the and then the, the whole whole uh, section. With the end, uh, end cables uh, at the diaphragm, and then few cables in these in the spans. In fact, uh, they this particular spans uh, between pier number 108, 107, 108, and 109. There was a launching girder was auto uh, launched at span P 107 to 108, and all the segments were hanging in position. Uh, stressing of P span 108 and 109 was in progress at blister locations and the collapse of span 10810 triggered at two locations in fact there was a one trigger at uh, at uh, this the from pier segment these the uh, second segment where the first trigger has happened at the time of uh, stressing at the time of uh, collapse basically the total number of 16 cables are stressed and at the night four cables are further stressed and you can see that there was a second trigger happened at about almost at the center center and the span dislodged at the middle support of launching girder supported at uh, uh, the uh, diaphragm segments s2 between pier 108 and 109 and then as soon as the middle support at LG dislodged, the whole LG collapsed fully due to suspended weight of the segment of span 107 and 108. And this is a video. I think you must have seen this video uh, in in a, in a how this collapse has happened. There was a co complete compression failure, and it shows about that how this trigger one and trigger two has happened, and whole span has fallen down. Then, you know, uh, being the member of the investigation committee, uh, we have started looking into the contents and we find that the DBR are generally conforming to the guidelines of IRC codes. Friction and wobble coefficients are uh, used based on the manufacturer's standard specification. A broad design superstructure with spine in position as a part of construction stage analysis was done. And it was found that the compressive stresses are within the limits as prescribed in IRC. And uh, particularly for grade M40 in all section of the collapse structure. However, when we look into the overall quality of the construction, we we have commented that there is a mar if there is a marginal variation in the concrete grade for any poor quality in the in situ concrete at the critical stress section may lead to the compression failure of the segment concrete. In fact, in some of the segments, the early stage stressing has been employed. Uh, 
and of course that may be the reason of uh, having using such a low grade of concrete and then de deploy employing a early stage stressing <clears throat> the crushing of the concrete of substandard quality of some of the segment which is very obvious when the when we visited the site core test results are reflecting that they, they there is a certain the strength is uh, not up, up to the mark and moreover, the comment from our art side, our side is the adoption of extreme value engineering. Value engineering is done. This, that's very good for any economical structure to be adopted. Uh, but value engineering with the parameters of code and guidelines is done. But lack of adherence to the quality control measures and monitorings are noticed. Actual concrete volume is more than less. That's a part of concrete. Even early stage stressing has been adopted. A uh, concrete grade proposed is M40, uh, is low in com comparison to the similar such important elevated structures which are constructed in the past. The quality control measures, we find that they are not uh, even up to the mark. And even particularly in, uh, in such projects, we can see that gluing operation is also suspected because that is always a part of uh, a first impression in any investigation that whether the gluing in the segments is done properly or not. We have, uh, you know, after going through this study, we have some, some sort of recommendation that the minimum grade of concrete should be M50. Uh, application of the compression to the reduced area of superstructure should be 0.48 FCK or less during construction stage. In fact, uh, we have come, we, we uh, these some uh, organization has come up with a, uh, new interim guidelines suggested for a single stage stressing with a with a 0.36 FCK uh, limiting stress under SLS rare combination. Quality control measures should be established at the casting yard. No deviation from the proof drawing should be allowed. The two stage stressing can be explored preferably with the higher grade of concrete after approval from the proof consultant. Post, post casting quality control check for the segment may be incorporated like NDT and other things. Adherent to the procedures for gluing of epoxy should be, should be followed and it should strictly follow the recommendation of IRC SP65. And entire process of launching and pre-stressing of the girders to be monitored through CCTV and to be viewed by authority engineers. There is some interim guidelines which I discussed. We, we had a discussion on that and it was uh, it was recommended and in, in the, even the interim guidelines are of the view that the post tension segmental bridges with internal tensions shall take into court account the effective area of the duct at the time of loading. As per clause A 6.3.3 of IRC 112, SLS check for rare combination has to be carried out with which includes wind load and thermal stresses in combination. However, compression, compressive stress in the concrete in a single stage pre-stressing shall be limited to 0.36 FCK, which is, which, is, which is part of the recommendation and further, uh, uh, further you know, <clears throat> uh, are published by uh, interim guidelines also. Two-stage stressing is very important for such light, uh, large decks and application of epoxy should be as per the guidelines of IRC SP65. There should be proper method, method statement of erection arrangement. The spine and wing concept with single central pier, there should be restriction on the length of the cantilever wings. In fact, there was discussion that we should restrict the length of cantilevering wings to 40% of the overall deck width. And there was another discussion that we should have a bridge deck of precast segmental spine and wing construction, not exceeding 28 meters. Uh, structural design of bridge deck erection like overhead gantry, launching girder, underswung launchers, travel formworks, concrete to be got proof checked by the consultant and also load tested before use. There should be some modification required in the contract agreement provisions pertaining to DPR consultants, detail design consultants, and proof consultants of authority engineers and independent engineers. In fact, uh, after Mr. these- Chepa, Another one minute would be fine yeah, with you. One minute will be fine. Uh, there was a discussion there was further discussion which has happened and happened and now it's it's in in some publication also particularly the dimensional uh, dimensional effect you know uh, dimensional scale effect on the design this is the point i would like to bring to your 
this bring in this forum for discussion in fact and uh, it's a, it's a published document also in some books also and in some papers also the recent failure of white decks is being investigated in detail related to the effectiveness of the principal codes and guidelines when the then the large decks uh, large bit is increased to, to reduce the weight of the segment the struts, struts were provided inside as well as outside this phenomena started having dimensional scale effects during design as well as the construction stage the dimensional effect that is that means if you are enlarging the section and standardizing the section over and above the tried and tested design section has created pre predominant effect in the structural behavior i think we are we are not not very much aware of how the how the structure is behaving and design rules in the codes and practice may not be valid to cater the secondary effects generated in the superstructure having central core and large cantilevers in the wide decks we have central box section with large cantilever on both sides supported by external studs the codes and practice adopted for analysis designs are not specifically indicating their use in particular type of section of superstructure however keeping in view the recent failures the structure it has, it has, it has compared the structural engineer to deliberate whether this full area of the deck while calibrating the stresses at critical locations are mobilized or not that's very important and of course you know i would like to mention it very emphatically over there over here that designer fraternity is never of the view that accident happened not because of the structural engineers neglected to provide sufficient strength as prescribed by the accepted design approach and the code requirement but because of the introduction of unknown behavior with the enlarged uh, deck widths maybe that that needs to be properly looked into it uh, and of course properly having a test on this this aspect is being debated in various forums these for, forums these dates where i am also member of that forums and uh, there was a discussion that width, width of the decks should be restricted for segmental construction segmental spine and wing construction or maybe overall segmental construction and maybe this will be the way forward for having some mitigation measures for reduction in the accidents in the future as far as the design is concerned thank you uh thank you thank you mr sharma i think you have given a fantastic uh, detailed uh, kind of a uh, narration of your findings of a particular one single project which is very good to go into the depth of it and apart from that you have also said that we may design something our design results our analysis results may give us something but the structure may not necessarily behave the same way in a special cases like you have very wide structure and all that so certain amount of research is needed maybe international documentation and research otherwise to see whether this behavior is right or not whether we should permit that wider structure or not until such time that we come to some conclusions good thank you so much now we have our next panelist uh, from the different side of world that is construction and that to temporary structures where so many failures have been taking place and we need to arrest those failures that is engineer mohan jatkar he received his engineering bachelor and pg degree from university of pune india he joined gaman india limited in 1980 as a design engineer and has extensive experience in design of permanent structure front end engineering and design of temporary structures he has handled assignments on variety of structures like industrial structures major bridges marine structures etc in various capacities before retiring as technical director presently he is advisor technical in gammon engineering and contractors private limited his main areas of interest are construction engineering design and construction interface issues design of temporary works and training he is a member of various technical committees of and co convener of b17 uh, b7 committee of irc for temporary structures he is a contributing author to the book of a uh, book that is bridge deck erection that's a famous book uh, published by institute of civil engineers uk as a member of work group wg6 of international association of bridge structure and structural engineering engineers iabsc so now we have an interface between design and construction so let's hear mr mohan jatkar thank you mr gupta so in about 10 minutes please 
Yes, sir. And in the meantime, I request the participants to post their questions in question answer box, please. Now, is my screen visible? Not yet. You have to open your uh, uh, PowerPoint and yeah, then, have... then come to Zoom again and mm -hmm. share. Yeah, I think you are able to see now. That's right, yes. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, my presentation basically today is on failures of bridges uh, due to temporary structures or construction processes uh, shortfalls, let us say. So this is just a short presentation as a precursor to the panel discussion. The focus is on failures due to temporary structures and uh, construction processes, as I said. I think Mr. Rajesh Shirke has given these uh, statistics on the failures which shows an alarming percentage attributed to scaffolding, which is false work, or the construction technology, uh, more than 60%, or almost 65%. Uh, this is rather a simplistic uh, presentation in my view, analysis, because there is no overlap of uh, various causes, uh, as is the, the generally the reality. I think Mr. Rajesh Yirke showed one slide, uh, the Swiss uh, cheese can, unless some uh, defects are aligned, uh, the failure does not take place. So this is, this segregation uh, can be taken as a representative one, but not uh, the reality as such. Uh, temporary works, uh, as, you know, the reference codes are IRC 87 and BS 5975, uh, most of you may be knowing. Temporary works are basically parts that allow or enable construction and that protect, support, or provide access to the permanent works. And they may not be in place uh, after the construction. Form work is something which gives shape to the fresh concrete. False work is the temporary structures that supports the permanent structure it is, till it is uh, self-supporting. Just uh, refreshing our minds so that we are uh, what we see is clear. Uh, just a few examples uh, in various phases of construction. Steel coffer dam for open foundation, you can see, or a uh, floating caisson, which eventually forms the well foundations, or a pier. Uh, nowadays, most of the uh, people use uh, full uh, height of the shuttering for a pier. Uh, there are examples of false work in this slide. Uh, which can be of various forms uh, for uh, girder construction or cantilever construction or an arch construction. Uh, on the right hand side bottom, you can see a movable scaffold, which is basically a shuttering system for the entire span, but which uh, moves on the supports, uh, supporting structure below from span to span, instead of uh, dismantling and uh, re-erecting again. Uh, of course, in segmental construction, you must have seen the examples in the earlier uh, presentations. 
there are uh, short line casting machines or a long line bed then there are underslung uh, launching trusses and then overhead or what uh, you can see at the right hand bottom is a for cantilever construction a long truss uh, basically these uh, launching trusses you cannot exactly classify as a temporary structure but they are specialized equipment which are very close to temporary structure definition. So uh, we can consider for the sake of this presentation, uh, what kind of failures take place or how we can avoid. Uh, just to uh, have a simplistic view of overall construction, uh, which will help in you know, uh, identifying what defects can take place where at what stage, or uh, there can be gaps between various processes. We start from conceptual design, then come to detailed design, then a contractor defines the means and methods uh, based on the design provided. Then uh, te te temporary structures are identified from the means and methods or method statement because uh, temporary structures by themselves are uh, an entity as such. It, it is uh, identified out of a method. So once it is identified, then either you have to procure or fabricated site or, or buy from a system supplier. Then there is procurement, risk analysis, and then the actual construction takes place. So failures can be due to various shortfalls in the processes themselves, that individual process, or the gaps in between. For example, uh, design details or specified sequences not constructible, and then some adjustments or modifications are made last minute and then can, there can be problems. Gaps between the design intent and the specifications and the construction method adopted. They can be changed in specifications during procurement. There can be design defects or change in uh, sequence during construction. And there are, of course, can be quality issues. So few, just a few examples. Uh, uh, you can see a launching truss which, which uh, accident took place in 60s, 1960s. Uh, and then you can see a, the, a pipeline bridge where a PSC beam was very light because uh, there was no live load coming on that except the pipeline load. So in the, both the cases, the failure took place because of the lateral instability uh, introduced because of the slenderness of the beams. The issue is uh, the lifting points. Uh, who is supposed to define? You know, the designer should define it uh, actually because it affects. It is one of the major factors which uh, introduces instability. So, uh, designer should uh, invariably define the lifting points in the drawings for this uh, kind of uh, beams. Here is a case of a cable state bridge, but at the time of Failure, it was not a cable stable, it was just a simple structure. The point is construction sequence many times is identified in general terms or indicative as in a picture or a sketch format. It does not specify in specific words that there should be a hold point, that the pylon construction cannot proceed unless some number of stays are in place. In this particular case, uh, there was a specification regarding the uh, advancement of the cantilever, but not of the pilot. It was just indicative. So yeah. it should not be left uh, undefined. Then uh, coming to the temporary structures itself, I mean, there can be uh, problems in the design of temporary structure itself. In this case, uh, there was a properly provided uh, and designed uh, pulse work, but a flash flood uh, took place or a flood came along, maybe it was not anticipated. But many times there is a uh, tendency to ignore the horizontal forces which may, may come out of wind or anything. And uh, uh, people forget there is there is a construction tolerance in the erection of the staging itself or any false work for that matter. So they, they exactly, it may not be vertical, you know, there can be some deviations because of, uh, you, you cannot have everything in exact plumb. So there is a codal requirement that a minimum 3% of uh, the vertical load should be considered as a horizontal uh, load and many times this is forgotten. 
So uh, there are procedural controls. Uh, I'm only now talking only about temporary structures. Uh, during the design, a design brief or a design basis should be prepared in consultation with all the parties concerned. Those involved in the permanent design, maybe in the fabrication of the temporary structures, construction and uh, proof checking also. Brief should include all the uh, relevant data to the design. Many times site conditions are not known exactly and the uh, temporary works designer uh, sits in his office and assumes something and uh, it can lead to problems. Proof checking is to be did, uh, done of the temporary structures again I'm talking. Depending on the complexity, one slide Mr. Again Rajesh showed in the similar situation uh, that various complexities are there in the structure or the scheme itself. So uh, a proof checking has to be done within the organization or by a third party yes, accordingly. Again, coming to procedural controls, I think in my opinion, this is a more uh, important uh, issue because design, maybe there are, it is uh, in a better controlled environment. But when it comes to operation, it is, you know, uh, the, the, we cannot exercise the same degree of. So the codal specification, either in BS code or eventually what we have adopted in IRC, there has to be a uh, designated uh, individual at the uh, site level, maybe site management level, who will have an overall control, uh, appointing the TWC, as we can see later on, what responsibilities he has. Then the, uh, there is a temporary works coordinator called the TWC or his assistant's uh, TWS supervisors. So he is come responsible at the site location for coordination of all activities related to the temporary structure. In many organizations, this setup is not there, thinking that uh, this is an unnecessary overhead or tech. And actually, there can be some parallel responsibilities and some kind of setup can be established uh, depending on the size of the project. It may be a small group. It can be an independent large group, uh, depending on the project magnitude. So what are the roles? I'll just briefly go through this. Uh, he starts with design coordination. He is the point of contact between site and the all design offices and so on. He has to provide a, a, an adequate brief, design brief, uh, giving the actual uh, site conditions uh, to the designer as an input. Uh, again, it is uh, taken ahead as informed and converted into a design basis and then the design is done on this uh, approved design basis, let's say. Procurement of temporary structures, sometimes there are, of course, uh, shortcomings uh, or change of specifications due to availability and so on. And the designer comes to know or may not come to know about these changes and the site goes ahead with the fabrication. In my opinion, false work, that is critical supporting structures should not be fabricated at site and they should be either done in a workshop or bought from a system supplier. On-site implementations, uh, of course, preparation of method statements and checklists are important and uh, uh, checking of erection, safe use, sequencing, and so on has to be done by the TWC's team. Uh, permit to load, permit to dismantle the temporary structures, all that arises out of this checklist. Uh, and again, most important is the change management. Many times, because of the site conditions, there are changes, uh, as the earlier speakers also mentioned. Uh, in the material itself or methods of statements or sequence of construction. And unless they are verified by the original designer, this should not be implemented at site. So the agreed changes then have, and the rectification of faults, if any, are to be corrected at site. And that again is a TWC responsibility. We have, when we come to the bridge deck equipment, uh, similar procedure has to be adopted, but it can be more complicated because uh, ultimately they are uh, highly mechanized uh, equipments. So you can see a precast segmental uh, construction in full span launching, but of course there can be accidents. This uh, segmental construction is becoming, has become rather very popular because of the speed of construction and the 
degree of quality control and so on. But there are many stakeholders uh, in this uh, kind of project, right from the owner, uh, structure designer, and the equipment designer, construction engineering team at the site. And of course, there has to be a peer, peer review and there is a fabricator involved and so on. And management of all these uh, interfaces is a tricky kind of situation. So there have to be checks and balances at every stage to ensure that whatever assumptions are there, in uh, particularly from the reactions that are coming from the equipment to the uh, permanent structure during various stages of construction, have, are adhered to and uh, what assumptions were there in the beginning are uh, valid. Uh, Again, coming to the various phases of, uh, there is a preparation phase where general means and methods are uh, identified by considering the original design. Then there is a procurement phase, which uh, the equipment description report, which uh, gives all the dimensions, reactions, typical sequences of launching, kinematics, uh, all that has to be agreed again by all this. This is prepared by the supplier of the equipment or the designer and the contractor himself. Uh, operation phase, again, there have to be detailed method statements. <clears throat> As somebody mentioned that load test is uh, the most important to va validate the design. And there have to be a training of the crews at uh, various stages of uh, in the beginning as well as during construction. Sometimes people tend to forget over a long period of time if it is there. So they have to be refreshed every time. Uh, disposal uh, and storage is, of course, a contractor's uh, headache. Uh, so summary, uh, there is a concept uh, and the detailed design stage. Uh, one has to take the inputs from the construction team, particularly for constructability, what sequences are uh, can be adopted considering the site situations and so on. Then define the methods, means and methods. They have to be consistent again with the design assumptions. Then there are identification of the temporary structures out of these method statements. So the design basis on realistic uh, site uh, conditions. Then there has to be a proof checking as per the categories what I mentioned earlier. So these are the checkpoints or uh, what balances, checks and balances you can have at various phases. So during uh, procurement, there has to be a QAQC like a permanent structure, what structural steel are uh, procuring and so on. They have to be checked against the design specifications. There has to be testing and there is no compromise because it is a temporary structure. Then there is a risk analysis to be done by the site team, uh, defining the method statement checklist the, the crew again has to be trained once in a while. Actual construction, there have to be hold points and permit to load, unload, dismantle by the temporary works coordinator, as I mentioned earlier. Then uh, changes, if any, have to be verified with the designer. Again, in-process training has to be there periodically. Audits have to be there and all this has to be recorded. Uh, so that the, the audit can be done. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Jatkar. I think uh, it is really coming from your first-hand experience that you've experienced uh, over your, uh, I think, maybe four decades of career or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so if you please unshare. Yeah. Now we have another very eminent panelist, uh, Engineer Rajiv Ahuja. In fact, we have worked together in Stoop Consultants long back. Uh, Mr. Ahuja is a well-known bridge engineer, having 40 years of experience in planning and designing of bridges and highways. He did his graduation from Punjab Engineering College, Chandigarh in 1977, and also a postgraduate diploma in structural engineering in 1978 from the same college. He also did his MTech in soil mechanics and foundation engineering. Uh, from IIT Delhi in 1984. After working in Central Water Commission as assistant director for about three and a half years, he joined Stoop Consultants. That's where we shared the same office. In 1982, he joined, where he worked as bridge engineer till the end of 1992, 1991 rather. In the following year, 1992, he set up his own consultancy organization called Arts Consultancy 
Services Private Limited, offering services uh, for a large number of bridges and highway projects. He sold his consultancy business in 2009 and joined GMR Bangalore in 2010 as HOD Design. He left GMR in 2014. Since then, he has been working as independent consultant, offering his services to various construction companies for bridges and uh, highway projects. He is a member of IRC B1 committee, IRC B2 committee, uh, and was he was actively involved with preparation of IRC SB 114 2018, which is for the earthquake uh, design of bridges. Lots of new provisions provisions have come in this code. He has a vast experience in design of a large number of bridges and highway projects, including permanent and temporary structures, supervision, and proof checking. So we have a person with the four decades of experience, and maybe over four decades uh, of experience. So Mr. Rajiv Auja, would you like to share your about 10 minutes presentation? Yes, thank you Vinay. And uh, good evening to all the participants. So let me share my presentation. Can you see the presentation, please? That's right. Okay. So, you know, the today's uh, panel discussion is focused on failure of foundations, failure of substructure, superstructure, and then failures of segmental superstructure and how to prevent failures. So what I have done, I have taken, you know, possible causes of failure for each type of, uh, you know, structure. We may have very large number of young engineers and uh, who may not be knowing certain basic things. So I have focused more on such issues. Now, failure of foundation, particularly well foundation, the most common failure is during sinking of the well. And the tilting and shifting the well is very common, which may be caused by, you know, various reasons. There may be flash floods and well might have not been sunk to the required depth and it may tilt. And then, you know, there may be irregular casting of well steaming, causing difference in skin friction, deposition of dredge material on one side of well, causing unequal earth pressure and sand blowing in well during sinking, causing sudden sinking. So these are the reason for tilting of the well during construction and even after construction wells have failed because of you know these have not been designed for uh, uh, you know uh, scour uh, uh, there may be mistake in scour level or there may be mistake in discharge calculation and the scour depth might have been underestimated so which may cause failure of wells and as mr vinay told in the beginning in one case the well sank also now naturally how, what should be done to avoid the excessive tilt and shift. Prevention is better than cure. Precautions to be taken by regular monitoring of tilt and shift. And then there are several rectification measures which can be adopted during sinking to minimize the tilt and shift. Now, coming to pile foundation, there are many reasons. And a lack of adequate boring, which means the design depth will be much larger, but at site, the actual boring length may be less. Inaccurate soil investigation and classification, soil strata under tip of pile may be very soft, then misinterpretation of pile load capacity versus actual pile loads, inadequate structural design, vibration that cause lateral or vertical movement, flowing strata caused by adjacent excavation or bank slowing or liquefaction, eccentricity due to going or falling out of plumb, decay due to aggressive water, insect and marine bore attack and corrosion, disintegration of concrete due to poor quality of concrete or reactive aggregate, overweight due to earth fill, inadequate reinforcement detailing and confinement, improper connection with pile caps. So there can be large number of reasons due to which pile foundation may fail. Coming to open foundation, we all know that say, this may fail due to settlement and sinking, due to poor soil liquefaction and underestimation of long-term settlements, shear failure of soils due to wrong assessment of bearing capacity, underestimation of design loads, sliding and overturning caused by lateral loads, deep-seated failure, foundation resting on loose filled up soil, foundation resting on steep slopes. You know, sometimes in hilly area in particular, we have a foundation on a very steep slope and very often we don't check the slope stability because of the loading caused by foundation. Undermining due to flowing water, structure failure in flexure and shear. So these uh, figures are, I think, quite familiar. 
which shows uh, failure of the open foundation due to sliding, over tilting, soil being pressure. And there may be deep seated failure if the strata below is very soft, like a very soft clay, and it may lead to deep seated failure. So most of the structure consultants are not aware of uh, you know uh, this kind of failure, and this may cause failure. Coming to substructure, when we say substructure, it includes pier as well as pier cap. Now, there may be inadequate structural design, poor detailing of reinforcement in pier. That means the lapping and anchoring details are not shown in the drawing properly. Poor detailing of reinforcement in pier cap, inadequate anchorage of pier reinforcement into the pier, inadequate joint detailing of pier with pier cap and foundation. The pier is, you know, the bars are anchored in the pier cap as well in the foundation. But the joint detailing has to be done properly. Wrong estimation of deflection in large cantilever pier caps. Inadequate design of bearing pedestals subjected to heavy vertical and lateral loads. Clashing of bearing sleeves with heavy pedestal reinforcement. Cutting of reinforcement bars in heavily congested areas. I have come across literally some cases where the bars have been cut because there was too much of congestion. Even in pedestal reinforcement has been cut and there are a few more in such instances. Now, uh, you know, this shows the uh, Failure of one pier cap, Karam Nasa, which was shown earlier also. And on the right hand side, you see an old bridge, uh, which is parallel to this bridge, standing quite safe for last, I think, 50 years. Now, the common mistake which I have found in the pier cap, cantilever pier cap, the wrong location of lapping. See, if the width of the pier cap is quite large, say more than 12 meters, uh, because you cannot uh, provide a single bar, uh, it has to, uh, laps have to be provided. So I have seen some drawing where lap, all the laps have been given at one location at the center of the pier cap, which should be avoided. We should provide a single bar or we should use couplers. Then the joint detailing has to be done properly. The vertical syrups in the pier cap should be, uh, you know, extended inside the uh, junction. Similarly, the pier uh, stirrups, horizontal stirrups also should be extended. So the core of the joint should be properly reinforced. And when, particularly when the horizontal forces are very large in earthquake, uh, in a high earthquake zones, and there are methods to design these joints, which we normally neglect. And the pier reinforcement, say in this sketch it is one, it has to be properly lapped with the top reinforced, top tension reinforcement, so that the unbalanced bending moments are taken care and transferred to the pier. Now, coming to failure of superstructure, uh, everybody knows by now that in segmental construction, most of the failures are during, uh, you know, due to crushing of concrete after pre-stressing. Then girders collapse and there are blister failures and there, there's an inadequate gluing of segments which causes concentration of compressive stress. Now, during my life, I have, uh, you know, uh, come across certain uh, failures and um, I have listed out the possible reasons for that. The girders may be heavily reinforced, but poorly constructed due to reinforcement congestion, particularly near the anchorage zones. Laps are provided wrong places in absence of proper lap details in drawing. Stirrups are not anchored properly, leading to shear cracks. U-shaped stirrups provided in place of closed stirrups. I have even seen in one case, there are two U's. One is an inverted U inserted from top and a U from the bottom. And these are lapped at the center. So, which has resulted in shear failure. Premature removal of staging for cast and situ girder. Anchorage slipping due to poor concreting in heavily reinforced anchorage zone. See, in that, uh, you know, the vendor gives you certain uh, dimension, edge distances, center to center of the anchors, which are okay for a very controlled environment. But at site, it's very difficult to maintain those distances. And I have seen some failures because of that. So my suggestion will be to increase those distances by at least 25 millimeters. Unsymmetrical processing with respect to girder center causing lateral buckling. Known provision of reinforcement for tension developed during construction stage. In some girders, the tension is permitted at the top in a simply support system. Even though tension permitted as per the code, but we have to provide reinforcement for that without which uh, you know, top surface may crack. Excessive hogging either due to over processing or poor construction. At side, there is a tendency to overstress, even beyond the uh, jack pressure given in the drawing, which may result to excessive hogging. Then reduction in web thickness due to over tightening of tie bars during casting. In a pre tension gutter, in one case, I found the thickness was 180 millimeter, but because of over tightening of the tie bar, it reduced by 10 millimeter from either side. 
then supports at wrong places during stacking and transportation of precast girder and segments. You know, uh, during stacking as well as during transportation, the location of support should be defined by the designer. Lifting of precast girder and segments from wrong points, lack of lifting point detail in drawings, excessive precessing, which is already covered, lack of side studs or bracing during transportation and after erection of girders on pier cap. Many girders have collapsed because these are not properly laterally restrained. Clashing of bearing sleeves with superstructure enforcement and increased zones, wrong placement of bearing, diaphragm cracking due to inadequate design for superstructure lifting, inadequate design uh, for launching loads, inadequate design for suspension reinforcement required in case of indirect supports. Because in, uh, indirect support means the bearings or jacks are placed inside, not below the webs. And uh, then webs and deck slab, uh, uh, cantilever slab is hanging outside. So many designers miss this reinforcement. Now, recent failures of segmental bridges, these pictures are very common. Uh, everybody has seen these pictures. Apart from the reason which uh, were explained just now, the reason specific to failure of segmental bridges may be heavy reinforcement and cable congestion, particularly when two webs are provided for deck with as large as 30 meter to 35 meter, leading to poor quality of concrete. In uh, olden days, even for 7.5 meter, we used to provide two webs. Today, even for 30 meter, 35 meter, we are still providing two webs, which leads to concentration of forces and as well as the reinforcement. Diameter of reinforcement bars and cable size much larger than for normal bridges. Shop drawings are not prepared, which help in appreciating the congestion and help in improving the detailing. Lack of proper matching of segments due to inadequate temporary precessing, improper gluing, damage to shear keys leading to stress concentration and thus increase in compressive stresses beyond concrete strength. Launching gutter failures, Mr. Jatkar has talked about it. Then shortage of skilled manpower experience in segmental construction. I interact a lot with site engineers and uh, contractors. So this is a serious issue, shortage of skilled manpower. Lack of high quality control required during segment casting and curing. Then likely damage to segment due to improper stacking, lifting, transportation, and erection. You won't know one defective segment and small mistake can lead to catastrophic failure of the entire span. Unrealistic stipulated construction period, which puts too much of pressure on designers and contractors, leading to compromise on the required construction techniques and quality. See, in all our construction contracts, from day one, the supervision starts, and there is no time given to the designer and for engineering and design. So they are always under pressure, and they are not able to, you know, do the quality work. So I will give you just small example of congestion. Now, this is a real example where the span is 60 meter, deck width is just 12.5, cable type is 19T13, duct diameter is 125, web thickness as per IRC 112, 125 into 75 is a cover. So 125 plus 2 into 75, 20, 275, say 280 millimeter. The clear cover is 45 millimeter. Shear strips is 20 mm, which is provided at 100 millimeter spacing. Longitudinal bar diameter is 10 millimeter. Now the gap between the duct face and the vertical bar is just 12.5 millimeter. So you can imagine uh, the stirrups are placed at uh, 100 millimeter spacing. In fact, because there are just two webs for wide decks, the dia of the stirrup may be quite large, even 25, even 32 millimeter. If we go by this IRC provisions, then you will find there is hardly any space for concreting. And designers will always provide the minimum thickness. They will not, uh, you know, increase the thickness because of cost consideration. So my suggestion to IRC will be to review this provision. Now, how to prevent failures? Uh, As they say, two, three minutes would be fine. Yeah, just two slides. So prevention is better than cure. Then structural design, my suggestion will be post-graduation course should be introduced in bridge engineering. Structural design engineers to be trained for better understanding of structural behavior, particularly of complex structure. Involvement of academia for their participation in structural design. Design engineers should be sent to construction site for appreciation of construction problems, particularly detailing aspects. Shop drawing should be prepared and made mandatory. And then higher fees for design consultants so that they can afford better quality of design engineers and their training. Construction paid in the contract to take cognizance of realistic time required for engineering, investigation, and design, and allocate at least six to nine months in the completion period. Now, uh, when it comes to construction, site engineers and skilled laborers 
who actually carry out the work need to be better trained in maintaining quality control standard and should be better paid to attract better talent. Supervision by authority, authorities, engineer and independent engineers is minimal these days. They should be involved with regular supervision and own the responsibility for failures. Contract documents should be modified accordingly. Construction period in the contract to take cognizance of realistic time required for engineering activities such as investigation and design and allocate at least six months to nine months in the completion period depending on the type of the project. Construction period also to be fixed by taking the cognizance of complexity of the project and the minimum time required for each activity so that designer and construction engineers are not put under undue pressure to achieve the targets. This leads to compromise on quality leading to failures. Criteria for awarding the contract, the lowest bidder needs to be reviewed, which leads to compromise on quality standards. Punitive action alone against the contractor in the case of failure will not solve the problem. A concerted effort has to be made by all stakeholders to prevent such failures. Thank you. Thank you. I think you have given everything in a very minute detail. If people re religiously follow this in design and construction, no failure would take place. It will not be feasible for a failure to take place. But I hope and I wish that people uh, do take care of these things in the sites as well as in the design offices. Good. Very good. Thank you so much. Uh, okay. So before we go into the question answers, as we said about the question box, which I am seeing the box filled with 16 questions. As of now, I request uh, Mr. Atul Bhove, would you like to say a few words in about one or two, three minutes? Bhove sir, you are uh, muted. In case. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yes, first, of all, yeah, first of all, congratulations to all four speakers. I think it was a wonderful exposition of a um, lot of reasons uh, and what we should do, etc. I think it was. Really, really a learning experience. Um, just, just a comment or two on on the presentations and the contents thereof. Um, especially for white decks, you know, when you are doing spines and uh, wings, etc., or you are doing a regular conventional box girder of anything more than say 26, 28 meters. I think the effect of sheer lag is something that is generally well. Most most designers ignore the effect of sheer lag. I think this is very, very critical, especially when it comes to effective pre-stressing on or on effective compression, uh, compression uh, flange. I think effect of shear lag needs to be very, very minutely studied because most, most of the designs that I see don't have this effect considered and, and, and most people would like to ignore the effect of shear lag. I think that is very, very critical um, whether this has been considered. Second, especially when you're doing spine and wings, we have seen that the connection between the spine and the wings is the weakest link. Generally, that's the point at which you always have a problem because that's an in-situ stitch or an in-situ joint, whatever you call it. Uh, and then you either have or you sometimes you don't. You have cross pre-stressing, which you also grout at a later date, and that also starts creating a weak link. I think that also needs to be investigated a little bit more in detail than what we do at this moment. Most most detailing is, is wanting in these two particular um, areas. I think other than that, I have no real comment to make. I think the, almost everybody covered uh, everything that is really needed to be sort of brought to the notice of, of most people. Um, and of course, we give a lot of emphasis on design, concept designs and things like that. But like um, uh, Mr. Umesh Rajeshirke mentioned, uh, you know, design failures are only 10 bridges out of 600 bridges. So we have to be really, really um, skeptical about, uh, you know, focusing so much energy on design. I think most of the energy should be concentrated on construction and construction related failures. So that's where most of the action failure. takes place. <laughs> yeah, well, that's where most of the action takes place. So, so we have to be really careful about that. Right. That's about it. That's that's all the comments that I have. Yeah, thank, thank you so much. It has come from a very, very experienced um, a member of the fraternity, Mr. Adul Bobe, and he's a founder member of IIBE. So, yeah, very good. Uh, I'll like to request Mr. Dr. Uh, Harshavadan Subarao if he can just give his quick, crisp views in two minutes, please. Yeah, thanks. Thanks uh, to IIB for organizing this very, very important set of two lectures uh, on which we are all learning. There's no question that I'm learning as I see things. I think about, uh, it reflects back in my mind about things I've observed or failures I've seen 
and I'm just reinforcing some things and I'm learning new things. I'm sure we all are. And the next lecture also will be of this quality and uh, bring about uh, things that uh, we need to focus on and uh, actually change our practice. In the conceptual design, in all, in all the life cycle, uh, we need to actually change. There is no doubt, if you see today, there is no contractor who has escaped a, a failure. A good consultant, a, a good proof consultant, and are also involved with uh, such uh, events uh, and uh, they are attracted. Uh, nobody really has escaped Philip. There are reasons probably maybe because the pace at which we are doing things are uh, just too, too fast. The demands on contractors are just too, too fast. Designers where we, you know, we have to do things like overnight, maybe sometimes cut corners to save time. Everybody's under pressure. So this pressure is one of the reasons really for having so many failures. I, I, in my mind, it, the human factor side is far more important than actually the technology side. The, uh, the technology side where we're having uh, issues really are pointed out many in temporary structures, many, many a times, even in permanent structures, we see um, uh, failures. Just recently, I'm investigating four such failures. All this happened within one month at different parts of India, but all in one month. So you can see the rate at which failures are happening now are so high. And there is a systemic issue here. You know, it definitely, I feel, has to do with the pressure put on contracts and construction time. This is one issue I wanted to flag up. The other I wanted to also uh, discuss is change. I mean, this institution like IAB will flag up uh, uh, what we need to look at. But where policy has to be directed, uh, really nothing happens. The policy changes that are required uh, for improving safety in construction, I would say overall safety in construction uh, are not there. Secondly, we don't have a, even for investigating failures, we don't have a accredited panel of forensic engineers. In fact, forensic engineering is not even taught or much appreciated in its formality in India. Leave alone for buildings, leave alone for bridges, not even for buildings. So that is a crying need where we need to really focus our uh, uh, attention on seeing how to develop forensic engineering as a, uh, as a systematic practice and a systematic training, a systematic accreditation. Then the other, of course, is the 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 um, uh, sort of lack of bridge engineers. Today we aren't uh, bridge engineering. Before, say about 20, 30 years ago, was a very much sought after profession among structural engineers to be a good bridge engineer. Today, most bridge engineers are running away, you know, to other uh, other uh, uh, computer sciences and so on. Even after finishing their graduation which uh, we need to look at. How do we retain the character? We talk about capacity building, but we, are, we don't have capacity. We're losing what base capacity we had at educational stage itself. So these are things we need to look at. I'm not going to go into the technical part at, uh, today. Uh, I, I would take that up at a later date. Uh, Thank you, Dr. Shivam, because on, the, uh, on 21st also, you're, in fact, you have another panelist on that. Oh, right. So right. I'm so sure we'll take it up on that to offer, but... We wanted to briefly at least hear your views. Certainly, all this policy and all that you talked about See, uh, really needs to be enforced. People do it only when there's enforcement. That's the Indian psychology. Right, sir. True. You know, it's called it's called chalta hai attitude, as you call it. But actually, in forensic engineering, there's a term for it. It's called normalization of deviance. So, you know, the Burdon Press gauge goes up to 90 when it should be at 85. And then yeah. everybody looks at it, nothing happens. The hydraulics are all working perfectly. The, the launching gantry or whatever have you, the pre-stressing, whatever have you, it's okay. Nothing happened 10 times, 15 times, 20 times. So we all accept this deviation and it's called normalization of deviance. And it becomes a norm. Then that becomes a set norm. Nothing will happen at 95. Yeah. Chalega. It's, we have warning is there, manual is there, but 95, nothing is happening. We've done 20 such before. 20 first one fails. So now we'll take up questions, but before that, since our Director General has joined us, sir, we would like to hear a couple of words from you in two, three minutes, please. Okay, sir, sir. Yeah. So I have been seeing the reports of bridge failures in recent times. And my feeling from my experience also is Complacency is one factor for some failures. If there is a bridge of, say, 10, 15 spans, 
after five six fans a complacency comes in and the procedures may get short circuited i remember that in my time every arch bridge of 10 spans or like that fourth or fifth spans would collapse because the centering the people took it for granted and ho jayega na ho jayega na dekha hai na aapne that attitude comes in and second thing which i noticed even during uh, the 55 flyover project in mumbai the speed gets precedence over sometimes safety you know i remember in some cases the consultants were not allowed to stop work bad work because speed was paramount and in that hurry sometimes you can make a mistake and thirdly some consultants probably and their office is very overloaded and sometimes the senior people may sign some drawings without really looking at them in detail and i mean i won't name anybody but i have seen it happen in one office and uh, that needs to be guard i don't know how to guard it if there is too much work naturally you can't look at every drawing with that care so that is all i wanted to say about this interesting thank you for uh, you know i know that this is coming from a person with uh, probably five or six decades of experience really well and uh, sort of uh, enlightening for us uh, we have one more uh, gentleman i hope he's uh, he unmutes engineer sk puri who is the president ict and who is also i mean who was a director general of uh, ministry of road transport and highways uh, puri sir Two minutes with you will be now. So this certainly will start the question. Not to worry. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. I think uh, Dr. Harsha Subrahu and uh, Mr. Tambe, whatever they have said, I would just uh, extend that to some extent. You see, now we are in the age of supersonic uh, speed of construction. Uh, There's two or three points I would like to flag, which I am seeing in my construction sites. So it's from construction. One is it is records making only. Method statement, yes sir. Method statement is there. It is only on paper. Nobody has seen what is the method statement and whether it is to be implemented in a system. We are in the uh, age of EPC contractors where the design is to be done by the contractor. therefore the speed now he will do the, uh, the drawings sometimes the construction activity starts even before the supervision team is in at site they have been or the construction activities have started so immediately because the contractor is ready with the drawings all drawings will be dumped there is no hardly any time to actually go through that the proof check of that the time which is required to Go and digest the design. What is to be done? Method statement. Then during construction, what is the method statement of? Uh, so point is that uh, design is okay. I think uh, panelists have covered all those things. Main thing is during construction, there has to be a checklist of activities where the the senior people. Have to go through that whether the method statement has been properly, like Dr. Jagdeep said, that unless a method methodology is there in place and everybody knows what are the critical activities, how it is to be done, and that is where the failures which I have also gone through at some of my sites, it is because of the speed that uh, safety is, you know. Kept on the side, and speed, speed, speed. So that is what I am only feeling is the way forward is that yes, we have to give some time that proper design is to be done, proof check, 
a proper method statement has to be there a proper checklist has is to be there it is not only that only for record purposes similarly some of the failures which have happened that is the condition of the supporting equipments what uh, stambe said very correctly that one or two spans done after that whether the jacks proper uh, are in proper shape or your gantry is in proper shape or whether it has been maintained properly uh, calibrations have been done or not so that eventually after second or third or fourth repetition that they are not in that good shape where it should be that properly checked and that so i think uh, we can uh, keep on talking i will not take much time what i was trying to highlight is that at size that uh, already used by mr harsha was then and the ke chalta hai attitude has to go because we are hum log jo kehte hain na ke steer ki sawari kar rahe hain bahut speed se kar rahe hain accidents are bound to happen we have to protect those happen and therefore a system a systemic approach at site checklist method statement review of everything and then yes uh, we cannot say that yes quality we are all good engineers we are all uh, common sense is there in everybody and we can all do only thing is that pressure of speed has to go away from us thank you very much thank you puri sir i think the words have come from one of the most technical administrative or technical administrator shri sk puri ji who was director general and now he is president of a large company ict so i am sure your words must be having lot of but i hope you all follow it and we want to see zero accident i i can only just uh, 10 seconds you see i am involved in uh, six or seven countries also Uh, where projects are going on i am the engineer project director we are not facing any such kind of accidents because that speed is not there in india the speed and the epc and the design during construction and then you know new technology change in design change of scope all these things are uh, you know creating these problems thank you so questions are going on increasing that means there's more curiosity among the people who are with us and who join today so we have our secretary dr gopal rai he is a managing director of uh, dhirendra group of group of companies dgc and although he is traveling on my request he is accepted that on the way itself i think he stopped at some place where the internet is good and i request let's call it moderator 2 to please take up the question I, for some reason i am i'm sorry but i have to join another meeting of ici i planned without my consent but i need to join it so i request dr gopal rai to please uh, take up the questions there are 24 questions at the moment and more so <laughs> thank you sir that note, i would also seek an excuse i have another meeting to attend to so Thank you all. Thank you. Very long. Same here. I need to get out also. Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> Thank everybody. You, Gopal ji, please take it away. Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I think uh, I will uh, before I take the question. Or, एक एक शायरी तो बनता है. ठीक है. Before बहुत दिनों के बाद अच्छी शायरी याद आई. कोई नामुमकिन सी बात को मुमकिन कर के दिखा कोई नामुमकिन सी बात को मुमकिन करके दिखा खुद पहचानना लगेगा जमाना कुछ तू भीड़ से कुछ अलग करके दिखा तो एक इंजीनियर लोग के लिए एक जोरदार था कि भैया और हम लोग बिल्कुल अगर हमने अगर एक लाख ब्रिज अच्छे बनाए हैं तो उसका भी तारीफ होना चाहिए और जो फेलियर्स हो है वी शुड नॉट रिपीट द थिंग विद डेट नोट आई स्टार्ट विद क्वेश्चन आवर थैंक यू विनय गुप्ता सर atul sir i think more or less there are in the open box if i am correct ruhi really, there are uh, question from niranjan ji and navin ji and basant kumar and samit ji hope it is these are the questions are there
हेलो रूही हेलो कैन यू हियर मी सर रूही इज ऑन म्यूट आई थिंक या आई थिंक लेट मी टेक अप द फर्स्ट कैन यू हियर मी सर प्रॉपर्ली माय वॉइस इज क्लियर हेलो या या इट इज इट इज क्लियर वेरी मच इट इज क्लियर so sir let me take the first one the nira there's a question from uh, niranjan ji uh there's not question further the report with the remedial measures shall be published in a popular elect technical journal i think he is uh, assigning to whatever presentation we have done today and the question to discuss uh, yes it is a duty of iib to make the technical documentation so that people can the, the the fresh engineers or the learning engineers can go through that and uh, can take over and uh, uh, in fact we should not repeat that part so on that front yes this is a message to uh, iib uh, niranjan ji has given if we can unmute him he can ask more properly more clear we'll try to do that i will request uh, who is uh, ruhi are you there or you are not there the next part was navin pankaj ji so it's necessary to some uh, set some limits by author- authority to ensure training of young engineers so how does uh, design parameters actually to evaluate documentation Opal. and uh, we should uh, do yes sir No, no. Your voice was not clear. Mean between. Hello. Now it is clear. Yeah, I, I will ask uh, to the panelists. I will take uh, 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 everyone to respond to that. That uh, from the audience, they were asking that uh, we should have some technical documentation, and we should have some papers. So on that, I will request first Rashid K sir to respond that. Yeah, yeah. It is very much possible. and many people are doing that so we can collect to many such case studies from uh, engineers who are get to, uh, like harshavardhan who is involved in the number of investigations uh, including mr aditya or abujas uh, rao and uh, it can be one compendium kind of a thing can be definitely tried uh, on the platform of iib so we should take that initiative definitely yes gopal uh, jatkar sir on the temporary support and all what you say on that part how we can make uh, documentation and also that we can uh, ensure that things have been passed on hey, your voice was not so clear but anyway uh, what i can say on this is we should already uh, uh, we should by all means go ahead with the documentation what uh, some people are asking and what mr rajesh sir has commented but there is already lot of documentation available unfortunately people are not going through and uh, in spite of all this documentation references on the job training is most important as mr abuja was pointing out there is a serious lack of man, trained manpower at site and uh, because and people keep on jumping from organization to organization and they 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 come from different cultures and they have to be aligned to the project and the training has to be continuous as uh, mr tambe also pointed out after four or five spans you know people become complacent forget some of the things then the the key people also are not paying enough attention all these things happen so training is definitely overriding requirement out of all this uh, whatever uh, we are saying Jat- right jatkar sir can you can you suggest some books or some uh, what you are saying that there are documentation are available can you suggest to the the people uh, who are listening to us about temporary structures yes sir for temporary structures uh, one has to first read the code itself <laughs> that is irc 87 and uh, bs uh, finance 75 which basically is in two parts one is the design specifications which are more or less uh, like uh, permanent structures 
if you see the design process, there is not much difference between the permanent design or a temporary design. The difference is in the identification of loads, what sequences have to be considered, and what robustness has to be built in uh, kind, this kind of structure, because they are handled roughly many times at site, and they have to be used over a, a number of projects. It is not to be written off. You know, a, typically a temporary structure uh, requirement on a project may be as high as 15% of the project cost. So if it is to be written on of one on pro, one project only, it is not possible. It has to be reused. So that actual percentage uh, of depreciation comes to 3 to 5%. So all these things have to be considered. So this first thing is to read the code. Then there, there is a text by Dr. Rate, Robert Rate. Then there are a lot of useful publications by Temporary Works Forum of UK. Uh, I think these uh, three, four references are good enough. And so far as coming to the launching equipment and segmental construction, what somebody mentioned uh, in my introduction that uh, there is a book on the bridge deck e erection equipment, which is uh, co-authored by 10 experts across the world, uh, which gives very lot, uh, huge information on this kind of construction and uh, requirements. So one can go through all this. Yeah. So one, uh, yes, sir. Gopal, Gopal, one minute. Uh, Mr. Jatkar, yes, is it possible to make a, something like a checklist uh, with uh, on an IIB platform? So yes. obviously, those checklists will be uh, project dependent, but there are there are maybe a few common points uh, across the projects. So those you can, can we make a, as a IIB one publication, the checklist? Yeah, I, I, I agree with, I agree with you. Uh, actually, there are two, one or two sample checklists uh, given in IRC 87 itself. You know, uh, right. For so can common, we elaborate uh, or expand? Applicant. Yeah, common. Yeah, uh, but can, more there are a number of such items. Uh, sorry. Uh, there are a number of uh, some uh, such items for which a checklist needs to be developed. The basic checklist, which can be, you know, extended or elaborated in, uh, uh, various right. projects itself. Right. So there could be a generic ch ch checklist correct, or there correct. will be again a specific to that particular type of a construction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it so can that be could be a yes. great, great uh, help uh, to our community. Agreed, Agreed, Rajesh Kesab. I think we should come up with some documentation. Let me take opinion of Rajiv Ahujaji, engineer Rajiv Ahujaji, uh, on that part. Rajiv, sir. <laughs> As I said in my presentation, there is a lack of training. I have interacted with many structural engineers. And in most of the consultancy organization, only young engineers are working. There is hardly any supervision from top. And they are not trained also. They are not exposed to site. They have not seen the launching, the skip, erection, scaffolding. They have not seen that. So they are not aware of the consequences. So that is a very important part as far as the design is concerned. And in my view, uh, drawings should be quite elaborate, give all the details. Reinforcement congestion is a serious issue uh, because of you know uh, less number of uh, webs and uh, high forces. So one has to focus on that. And of course, at site, quality is important, but it's very easy to say contract has not maintained the quality. But as everybody said, there is an undue pressure, too much of pressure at site also. And everybody questions the speed and they monitor the milestones, you know. Nobody bothers about the quality. So, and the construction period for any project should take cognizance of the complexity of the project and accordingly completion time should be fixed. So, all stakeholders right. should, you know, participate. It's, it's not uh, right to blame only one agency. We all are responsible and everybody should contribute and try to solve this problem. Uh, let me ask to all the panelists, actually, uh, the basic uh, about that, uh, why our young design engineers and engineers are getting failure to understand the physical phenomena of any bridge mechanism and all? Why can't they imagine how the failure pattern will happen? What will happen? Anything? I think we are more or less stuck to the, the, the model and all. The physical interpretation has been more or less diminishing from the industry only everything is on the digital mode. So how to improve that part? Let me... Yeah, uh, Gopalji, actually, you know, uh, one thing is uh, very clear that uh, the accidents which are happening uh, are having a mix of, uh, uh, you know, reasons, uh, maybe related to design and construction both. 
but the only issue which the industry is facing at the moment is the capacity building you know the invest, the the few investigation where i was involved i can see that uh, uh, the construction teams construction engineers particularly uh, at site you know uh, they they needs needs a full fledged training uh, to to run the uh, sites uh, i can see that design engineering we have a good uh, resources available uh, within the country but yet, yes when we are doing some some type of structure and going to the level of uh, 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 extreme type of value engineering we need to uh, align it to, with our construction practices also so i think uh, one thing is very clear that capacity building is the first paramount requirement for the industry at the moment uh, uh, sir aditya sir and to ask whether actually like in in we we see in in the other countries also if any failure happen the people publish a very good technical paper and they the 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 the, the people on the consultant side and the panel side people discuss the failures and how to come over the things but in india we see that we are once the failure happens it go in a political agenda and the engineering is lost in between and we don't we hardly publish any failure engineering papers uh, like why, why such practice is not there uh, let us accept it and let us uh, i don't know how to improve yes i think uh, uh, yeah, we we need to ha have this uh, practice uh, in future in fact i think that is happening also there are some forums where these failures failure as being being documented and of course iib iib is another forum where we can we can do the doc documentation of the uh, the in, the failure which has happened in the past where uh, we are uh, one uh, we as a panelist has uh, uh, involved as a investigation of course uh, the dr harsha myself and uh, uh, others are also involved into this we can always document in, uh, these things and of course may make it uh, uh, to to bring to the knowledge of uh, engineers yeah. to to have no, proper uh, I, I think guidance proper guidance sir uh, aditya sir in respect of location bridge name bridge this we want to have a technical paper on the concept where the things has been failed so okay. we do we are not we are, we are only worried about the engineering we are not worried about the location and all these things so i because i i see the questions which has been raised except one question which is on the i think i will take whether the cyclic load test in longitudinal direction on multi span bridge will help us predict the failure pattern uh, i think uh, aditya sharma sir can you reply on that mm, i'm not sure about any cyclic test at the moment you know uh, it's difficult uh, because i have never done it in fact so uh, i think some other panel panelists can take it no no there are there are yeah, techniques like um, uh, measuring the accelerations and uh, finding the mode shape and if the stiffness is or uh, material is degrading so the frequencies uh, goes down and there are with the artificial intelligence nowadays uh, there is a possibility of uh, predicting the uh, further degradation or a failure so those kind of a tools are getting developed may not be matured at this stage but uh, definitely in near future they will be available uh, um, uh, mr rashuke it's a part of monitoring of the bridge eh? right so he is asking so he is cyclic load means uh, he is saying that whatever the vehicles are going you can see the uh, 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 measure the frequencies and with that you can uh, have some uh, idea about the, uh, the uh, dr rai in fact uh, if if that is the case which mr rashir k has explained uh, yes, you see the ministry has uh, already taken up uh, this uh, monitoring of the bridges uh, and if you can see that in in the recent times uh, most of this extra dose and cable stayed bridges uh, published uh, you know tender published by ministry and nhi this this monitor uh, structural health monitoring is the is the is the, is the yeah, part yeah, of the tender is the requirement sir, uh, sir i have checked the naini was a first health monitoring bridge in 2001 naini bridge in fact uh, today if you if you ask the data from the covis and all okay never uh, like thing has been uh, in fact i checked with them after 22 years although the sensor are still working fine but only problem is who will use the data 
and what is the importance of data what is the physical interpretation of data i think health monitoring is another subject we'll take later on because it is uh, in, in 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 a world if any new thing come it goes in a very speedy way but we don't know what is the use of that and who will use who will monitor and everyone go as a as a as an like this is a magic something but we need to discuss on the health monitoring also because we are seeing from last 10 years all tenders everywhere the health monitoring is there but there is no control that what will do with this data and how to analyze there there is no continuation of the consultant responsibility on the health monitoring data and everything goes to the client uh, memory disk and and it goes on things so we are not analyzing that part also i think that monitoring part will take it but only request to all the i think more or less the questions were i request all the panelists to from this is this lecture was on demand of people that we should do something as a heavy so i request all the panelists without naming the bridge without naming the location if we can really come up with the uh, uh, a few book or guideline something like that if you can scratch for one bridge also in day or two we can make more and we can circular to all the engineer if we can save one bridge also one mishap also then our our our, our task is done so I, i request all the panelists okay to share some technical paper without naming the bridge without naming the location and what are the key points apart from that because i think we are short with the time now and uh, anything concluding uh, from the any any uh, the panelist or the speaker side want to convey i think tambe sir i have said my whatever i wanted to say yes sir. while going for speed we should not lose sight of detailing and looking at every aspect because you may construct a bridge of 25 spans but every span is the first span that is how it should be tackled that's it uh, i think i will go with uh, this note and i will take last comment from uh, umesh rashir ke sahab to uh, on the like failure collection and how we can give to the students and the young team then i will give a vote of thanks and then we can conclude umesh rashid ke yeah, so gopal what comments. yeah yeah gopal what we can do so whatever the failures happened in the last 10 years first we will just list those failures and then ha okay. uh, and then one by one how we'll try to get uh, data because now the enough data is available on those failures and without much uh, 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 having a um, say political or Uh, this one uh, angle how will just go technically how what could be the see there may be a, some clear evidence there may not be a clear evidence the one as on today but we can definitely critic how what could have gone wrong so uh, so that way we can build that particular uh, uh, data or pool of the failures so f- f- to begin with let's jot down how what are the various failures that happened in last day in 50 years recently uh, so that way we yeah, can yeah. proceed uh, further i think i ag- agree with you sir so let us chalk out some in our regular ec meeting and yeah, in our yeah. uh, meeting let us chalk out and let us come up with some uh, a theme analysis part so that we can benefit to the yes. the industry also so with this note from uh, uh, rashid ke sahab let me thanks to today's uh, today's speaker and panelist uh she umesh raj sir ke saab i think they really it require guts to share the failures and to discuss the failure people discuss right. the success and all you it's required to discuss and evaluate it was <coughs> a lot of guts i think let us thanks to uh, aditya sharma saab and engineer mohan jatkar ji the, the huge experience in the field of temporary uh, supports and uh, lifting and thanks to rajiv ahuja ji for sharing Uh, their experience yes it, it it's a take away from this uh, first session is that we have to talk talk out the failures and we need to uh, list out and we have to solve and we have to come up with some uh, booklet where we can give to the young comers so that these things should not happen and yeah, yeah. and uh, the checklist checklist for this uh, during the session yes mm-hmm. right sir so i think there was uh, the questions was always on the uh, the question which has been raised is only to iib that we should sum up some failures and we should learn on paper also we should make it 
yes i will take this issue in our regular ec meeting and what uh, umesh rasirke sahab has told i will uh, like in last 10 years whatever failures has been happened we'll chalk out and we will do the engineering analysis and then we'll submit a white paper on that irrespective of location political part in this so with this note i i, I thanks to uh, vinay gupta ji who was doing initially the moderator and thanks to the future coming uh, also uh, thanks to the all uh, second phase of future coming uh, the speakers and all so with this note I, we conclude here today's uh, session uh, on the failures of the bridges ek ek shayari to banti hai sir to iske liye irshad irshad ha to matlab ek karna ye hai ki we have ab log itne failures se itne dukhi ho jate hain to कोई नामुमकिन सी बात को मुमकिन कर देखा दिखा कोई नामुमकिन सी बात को मुमकिन कर दिखा खुद पहचान लेगा जमाना भीड़ से तू अलग जाकर दिखा सो विद दिस इंजीनियर्स यंग इंजीनियर्स लेट अस फाइट विद दिस एनवायरमेंट लेट अस लर्न ओनली थिंग इज माय हम्बल रिक्वेस्ट जितना आप समय अपने इंजीनियरिंग मॉडलिंग में और इसमें करते हैं थोड़ा आंख बंद करके उसका फिजिकल इंटरप्रिटेशन भी समझ लें this is the biggest mistakes we are doing we have stopped imagining the the structure we have stopped imagining the structure on the because everything we are doing on the modeling part the physical interpretation is missing we are totally dependent on the the tools and all but our if we start imagining the we will try to understand the failure better than the the modeling part with this note oh. thank you very much ruhi thanks for all uh, all support yeah. and everything josefa ji yeah, yes sir yeah. thank you thank you uh, thank I you agree. yeah thank you thank, thank you sir good evening bye bye good night bye bye, bye. thank bye. you tambe sir bye. Bye. thank you bye, bye. bye. bye.